I'm in desperate state of affairs here. I um, I landed on Duna for the first time a couple of days ago, and um, I recorded this video of it, but because I couldn't really talk at the time, I didn't make much of a show of it. So you know, by itself, I couldn't really put it up. And the plan was to the next day do a much more interesting landing where I'd actually you know do my usual look at me I'm landing. Um, but oh, fuck off, David. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know, I'm lost now. Um, yeah, I was going to do a more interesting video the next day. But the first problem is, um, this game really shits itself when I try and record it now. Um, more so than usual, I like I can't even get into space kind of thing. And um, and second, uh, getting to Duna was actually more of a fluke than I thought. Like I know how to get there. I understand the principle of the thing, but it's not an exact science when I do it. I really am winging it, so, um, as I'm always saying. So, it might be a while before I do any more heroic landings on other planets, but, um, for now you've got this one. I don't really know what's happening in this. Um, it has a bit of talking on the video, but not much, so, hence me doing this. But, um, it was very masterful. A very successful flight, just come straight in off the orbit of Kerbin and met up with Duna where I was supposed to. Nice big curve. I wish I could show it to you. I don't think I recorded that part. Got a bit of rock plant play. Of course, I'm speaking sotto voce as I can because I think my sister's sleeping. The uh, drawbacks of communal living, I guess. I'm a bit sick of this song. Hang on a minute. Yeah. Tonight, we go to Duna. Next. More Robert Plant? No, thank you. So anyway, another thing I've noticed about this video, and other people who want to go to other planets, is that you frequently come in from, like, way above or way below, because if you take a zoomed out view of the solar system, it all looks like the planets are nice sitting on like the surface of a lake just you know all lined up but actually there's some subtle differences in their orbital inclination so like you know do all like that so if you do hook up with another planet frequently you'll be coming in from above or below unless you've really done your homework and i didn't do my homework this is you know i didn't realize just how shonky it was until i tried to do it again I do like the new um, space background they've made though. We've got a new Milky Way kind of thing happening. Oh, there we go. Coming into the red planet. Being the massive space nerd that I am, I really had fun doing this. It's like it's like the curiosity thing about a month or so ago. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> I may have posted screenshots of it. Yeah, yeah, on the. Uh, on the Facebook as soon as I'm done it, but um, ma massively disappointed that I can't put up better videos because um, of all the problems I'm having with this fucking computer. I don't know what's happening in the video at this point. What I was doing at the time was uh, listening to uh, War of the Worlds. Actually, put some of that on. Here we go. Here I'm circularizing my orbit. What you do is uh, you go, in this one I'm at the periapsis, and you do a reverse burn so that it brings the apoapsis in, and you do it until they're around the same, and voila, you've got a roughly circular orbit. Or if you're at the apoapsis, you burn forward and make the... You don't need to know this shit. Unless you plan on making your own landing. Well, the vegetation which gives Mars its red appearance had taken root on Earth. <laughs> As man had succumbed to the Martians, so our land now succumbed to the red weed. <laughs> One of my favorite damn musicals. It's up there with uh, Jesus Christ Superstar and Little Shop of Horrors. This is uh, Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds I'm talking about. 
I think what I was trying to do here was to get the orbit to go so that it'd be equatorial, but I never actually achieved that. I tried for a while and then I got bored, and so I decided to come in for a landing. Is there any fast forward control on this thing that I can use without having to move the window? No. Perfect music, really. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Geniuses. I love this game, really. Ba 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 ba. I want to cover this whole album, and um, for all of the instruments that we can't get, like the orchestra and the synth synthesizers and stuff, and all that shit, we could just use our mouths, you know. I think it would be really classic. You know, skip ahead. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're probably going to get copyright flagged, let's skip this, shall we? I'll probably get copyright flagged for this as well, but uh, who really cares? This is from The Shadow of the Moon. Great documentary. All of the best documentaries don't have a narrator. You'll notice this. Um, let me think. For examples. Uh, there's The Kids Are Alright, which is about the Who, and you'll notice that it doesn't have a, a narrator, or even a narrative. It just sort of has a bunch of interviews from the people that are actually being talked about. And uh, with Shadow of the Moon, you've got just the astronauts talking and the odd bit of file footage of JFK and stuff like that. And that's what a documentary should be, you know. The worst thing you can do is have a narrator. No, no, no. That's the second worst thing. The worst thing is inviting people that weren't there. And uh, you'll see this in a lot of musician documentaries, like uh, making of albums and stuff. You'll see, like... Uh, Rock journalists, people who write for Rolling Stone, and uh, and then the absolute worst is the uh, other famous people that have been inspired by them. You know, it's a good example of this. You can look up uh, the day that John Lennon died, and you'll get all of a sudden Michael Jackson. No, you'll get um, one of the guys from Oasis is talking about John Lennon at some point, and it's like, what the fuck is he doing here? So I actually want to form a federation of people that yoinks out all of the pointless interview subjects in uh, documentaries, you know. With that one, we delete Noel Gallagher. It was it Liam? Liam Gallagher. Ooh. I hate both of them, but when I learned a bit more about what Liam Gallagher was like, I actually developed a kind of grudging respect for Noel in having put up with him all those years. <laughs> and I don't say that lightly, because I really do hate both of them. They're terrible. Dance is my astronaut. I don't know why I have this on here. I don't. I didn't know I had any Michael Jackson. Has David been on my computer? Oh, this is pretty good. Look at that. Letting go of the uh, spent fuel tanks, and I found out that if you spin while you do it, they they go further away. Yeah. Next song, please. Ooh, Alone in the Dark music. Spooky music for the landing approach. Yeah, I skipped most of that, sped it up. This is my own seven minutes of terror, as NASA called it. I mean, it really doesn't get any better than spaceflight. You know. oh, this is the new cockpit view, I'm, I'm pretty fond of this, but there's a couple of practical problems with it. Um, as you'll notice, NASA ships usually have pretty small windows, but what they would do at least in the case of the lunar lander, was that the pilot would be closer to the window, so that, you know, it's a small window, but because he's closer, he gets a big, bigger field of view. That's <laughs> really badly explained. Um, and you don't really get that with this. So it's that. I don't know if the other windows were any better, but the window on that pod's not much use. You kind of like... It's like having a poster on the wall that changes colour. It's really not much good. But anyway, it's a work in progress. What am I doing now? Some sort of retro burn? This is what I hate doing about these retrospective videos. I'd much rather be actually playing it right now. I'm not really reliving the excitement here, it's kind of... Although this music helps. Spooky. Actually, that's the, that's the scariest part of the song. 
I used to leave the room when I was a kid if that came on. <laughs> Full throttle music. Okay, so I was headed for the polar ice cap. I think it's ice, I don't know. The ice cream cap. And now I'm headed for the desert. Hmm, I think this music's from Moonbase. Or at least that's what I've been led to believe. Turns out he actually has a site full of stock music. And without any help from me, David found his way to that site the other night while trying to find music for his No Moria video. And, um, <laughs> yeah. He didn't, he wasn't looking for moon based music, he was looking for just other stuff. And there was actually a really good piece of party music or something, I can't remember what it was called now. But uh, I'm gonna have to use it for something because it's fantastic. But yeah, it's a good site because um, you'll notice anybody, well, anybody who makes a video with a Mac like me, we all tend to use the same stock music because it's a lot quicker just to go into the included jingles with GarageBand than it is to actually go looking for stuff. So, and, my, and I'm not just talking about people who make videos on the internet. Like there's actual ads on TV that use music that we've used. It's really embarrassing. Oh, okay, so I've detached from the uh, engine there. Those four things I jetted off are uh, making their own way down. Still much too high to fire the parachute. As I learned in the in this landing, the parachute on uh, on your home planet opens up at 20 kilometers. So you're like, you wait for 20 kilometers, and then you're like, oh, it worked, I'm safe, and all that. And then this 20 kilometers goes by, and I'm like, the parachute's not coming out. What the hell's going on? It kind of made me nervous. I don't know what I'm listening to. I don't really remember this being in Moonbase. I must have downloaded the wrong song. Special unit of genetically augmented soldiers. Okay. Charity work. <laughs> Short plane. You moved on. It's Mel Gibson on the phone again. Some music would be nice. Okay. All right, so I'm starting to fire the engine. <laughs> That's one thing about space travel. It's not very quick. I imagine the people with short attention spans wouldn't really have much time for a video like this. But you know what? That's not what I was going to say, but... Down a two-way lane Gotta cover this one, I reckon. Driving fast down the highway Must have been insane Cause the temperature is too high Running way too fast Not you I love it Oh, starting to get some atmosphere. So by now I've started to panic because there's no parachute. I'm sort of banking on it opening up at a later time because of the lower atmospheric pressure. See? I'm thinking about these things. You know. And even if they don't work, I, I think I had enough fuel to, to have a powered landing, but I didn't really want to do that because it wasn't running too well and I didn't think I'd be able to keep it in control. But anyway, you can see the uh, rocks. We've already had this song. Okay, as I say, there's the rocks. You can see me coming in. I'm getting a bit of control over the attitude of the thing. Um, I look up and realize that the parachutes are still in that skinny mode. I don't know what you call it when they're like just trailing behind and they haven't opened yet. Whatever that is, that's what they're doing now. So that's still making me a bit nervous. Um, and also, shadows aren't working in this when I was playing it. Um, for some reason, the Mac version, or even the PC version, I think. Sometimes the shadows get disabled, and you have to, like, change some fucking text file in your preferences to get them back. I mean, that's that's much too work. I just want to play it and enjoy it. Really. So anyway, I fixed those after making this video, but... Um, it's really hard to land the thing when you don't have shadows, because there's no, like... Uh... See this altitude thing here, this altitude counter? That's like your height from sea level, and of course there's no sea level in this world, so I don't know what the hell that is, there's no context for it. And so typically if you land on somewhere that's not the ocean of your home world, you're on a mountain, and there's like the altitude's rather high. 
So yeah, if you're thinking, oh, I've still got three kilometers to go. No, you don't. I don't know. <laughs> Still coming in kind of fast. 40, 50 meters a second. It's probably survivable. Still waiting for the parachutes to open up like the petals of a beautiful flower. Ah, no! And, um. Any second now, I'll make my heroic landing on the surface of Duna. I keep on calling it Mars, actually. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's. What, four parachutes? And uh, really slows you down, so it's very good. It's like, <laughs> soft landing. I didn't even have to watch. I would like having the fast forward buttons available here. <laughs> Feeling very proud of myself. Oh, extending the ladder, getting ahead of myself. There it comes. The robotic ladder. It's not robotic. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I'm hoping they add a couple more cinematic sort of camera modes to the game because, uh, you know, I want to get rid of all this shit that's in the way. Oh! And there, there's me going in because I landed on a hill. Now, if you land on the moon on this, there's, the gravity's low enough that you can just sort of go whoop, and right yourself again. And I tried doing that here, but I really couldn't do it. So, um, there's that. You knocked me off of my feet. More Michael Jackson. I must have had some sort of purpose when I downloaded this because I don't listen to it. <laughs> um, I'm looking out the window trying to figure out what it is I'm looking at. It turns out it was the ground. No, there's the sky. I don't want this song. <laughs> so now I've got it the right way up. So I figure it's time to jump out, I imagine. No, oh, no, no. I'm going to play with the legs first. What a goon. Dancing the monkeys here. Okay, the, hopped out of the ship for the first time. But of course, since we're not the right way up, he's going to fall down. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep, so that was my first little walk on Mars. I don't make footsteps yet, but I, I, I figured I'll add something like that eventually. So. And, you know, after this point, I've kind of, I've made it. There's nothing really to see here, except for me walking around on the planet for a while. Let me just skip around a bit. I'm seeing that the jetpack works, but it's not as good as it is on the moon. Yeah, I'm walking, I think I was going to walk over to that rock, but it was actually a lot bigger and a lot further away than I thought it would be. Which is something that happens to real astronauts, apparently. So, um, I think I gave up after a while and decided to walk back to my ship. Hmm. But when I do these things, there's really no method to them. Just kind of mucking around. Again, this wasn't actually meant to be like a video that I would upload, because I was doing it thinking, Oh wow, I've done it! I'll do it again tomorrow and show the channel. And, um... Oh, what the hell? Was that the end of the video? It was the end of the video. Um, and the only reason I didn't stick to that original plan was because... The problems I've had recording it. And of just recreating this... Massive and out uh, <laughs> achievement of getting to the planet. Yeah. Uh, it turns out I made it look a little too easy the first time because I can't do it again. Oh, okay. So anyway, that's that's my mission to Duna. And I hope I can do more soon. I might even have to resort to filming the screen with a camera. God fucking forbid. Bit too old school for me, but um no. Well, some red dwarf music here too. Yeah. 